The dragon kick from the new Karate Kid movie is one of the flashiest cork variations because of this beautiful arcs that the kicking leg moves along. It is also known as shuriken cutter in tricking. I wanted to see if I could recreate that move in 3D. I'm not a professional animator so this isn't a step-by-step -step tutorial, it's more of a look into my workflow and the techniques I used. And hopefully you will be able to pick up a few useful tricks along the way. I will be using Cascader, which makes complex moves like this much more approachable. So even if you have never animated before, you can give it a try. And for reference, I used Ethan Turner's tutorial on this move. It's perfect because, first of all, he uses the same touchdown race setup, and he even records from two different angles, which made figuring out the poses much easier. Alright, let's start by blocking out the main poses. I will show the selected poses and the corresponding frame numbers. Other than that, I will show you a couple of clips and time lapses to illustrate some of the points. Since in the very first pose most of the body isn't visible in the reference, I acted it out myself so I can get a sense of the arm and leg positions. I began blocking the moments when the feet touches or leaves the ground. In the beginning I placed a pose every fifth frame, that way I could get get into posing without worrying about the timing. In most cases I start with the feet to set up the position and also the orientation. And once they look right I lock them by pressing R and make sure to lock every point controller of the feet. Then I move up to the hips, spine, arms and the head. When a pose is close to the previous one, I adjust it from there, but if it's very different, I reset all the controllers and rebuild the pose from scratch. This also can help avoiding carrying over mistakes from one pose to the next. I also recommend to turn on ghosts to show the previous frame. This way you can make sure that the motion is going in the right direction, the feet is staying at the correct position, and so on. I noticed that when the arms go higher than the shoulders, the clavicles don't follow automatically, so I need to manually adjust the shoulder controllers almost every frame. The hardest poses to achieve for me is always these arched back poses when the arms are next to the ears. Here one of the most challenging part is getting the back to arch properly. You can probably achieve it with auto posing controllers too, but I found it easier to work directly with the box controllers. And then I select everything in the upper body and, and bend the spine step by step in local mode. The other problem is with the shoulders, which is specific for the Unreal Engine 5 mannequin. They got squashed if the shoulder is raised up to the ears. Later I found that manually twisting the upper arm twisting joint fixes the issue. So in joint mode, I selected the first twisting bone of the arm and rotated it in local mode until the mesh deformed correctly. In the touchdown rise, the point of leaving the ground and when the hand first touches the ground happens in just a few frames, so the pose doesn't change that much. So I can just rotate around the center of mass until the hand touches the ground. And the fingers are really important here, they need a little backward bend, which auto posing doesn't handle that well, so I use used the box controllers again. Here I can also use the local tail mode to bend each digit at the same time. I regularly forget to pose the fingers when blocking, but they are really important, and if you ignore them, it always looks weird. I later did a separate pass on working on just the fingers, but I recommend you block out with the finger poses in mind. Coming out of the TDR, the character rotates around the shoulder, so I can set the pivot point to the shoulder joint and I rotated the whole body around it while keeping the right arm fixed. And that got me close enough to the next key and I can pose from there. At this point the main keys of the setup is done, here I decided to start working on the timing mainly because I got bored with posing, but I also wanted to see how this part is coming along, and it looks pretty decent for now.
Now let's set up the poses for the dragon kick itself. To determine the height and distance of the jump, the most important poses are the one before the takeoff and the first one before landing. So the position of these needs to be correct. But for the air poses, the exact position and rotation doesn't matter yet. I only focused on the body shapes. We will soon take care of the correct placement of these poses with the help of auto physics. So in the air I have one pose for starting the twist, then the crescent kick, which is just holding out the kicking leg in front of your body, and there is also one pose for the anticipation of the hook kick at the end, and the kick itself right before the landing. And to make sure that the landing pose is at the correct position, I enable the numbering on the grid floor. And based on the reference, the move travels about 1 meter forward and a little bit also sideways towards the camera. I adjusted the poses so the landing matches this path more or less. After the landing the poses are quite simple, their character is just regaining balance. I also like the visual contrast how the body moves from this strong S shape to a really straight pose at the end. With the main poses done, it was time to turn on the interpolation and see how the animation flows. I used Bezier clamps so I wouldn't get any unwanted overshoot. And then I set the IK and FK interpolations. The arms are almost in FK during the whole animation, only the right arm is in IK when it is on the ground. For the legs I used IK when they are on the ground or just doing a step, but in the air they are also in IK. Later I also set FK when the right leg is doing the preparation because it is moving in a big arc which is only happening with FK interpolation. In the air the whole body should be in FK and it's especially important when you are doing this kind of workflow. The position and rotation of the character is still all over the place and if you are not using FK then the poses would interpolate really weirdly. But we will fix the position and rotation right now. We can enable auto physics and first of all we need to check if the fulcrum points are correct. You can see that there are two or in sections, a short one for the touchdown rise and a longer one for the dragon kick. I only need the physics corrector at this stage for setting the position and rotation, so I disable the other tools. And now I can go to the mid-air poses of the dragon kick, select only a single keyframe and turn on the interval edit mode so you get this red border. This way I can set the physics ghost to only this frame. So the position of this pose is correct because it calculates the ballistic curve, but the rotation is still wrong, mainly because the setup is incorrect, but the, let's not worry about that for now. I can use the center of mass to rotate the character to have the correct rotation. And I can mark it as a priority frame and see if it fixes the rotation of the auto physics. But unfortunately it didn't in this case. So I set the position of the next keyframe the same way as I did before and I also corrected the rotation. And in this case if I mark it as a second priority frame then the whole trick is correct. And with that if we now take a look at the physics goes the move is already similar to our reference without adding any breakdowns. So obviously there are quite a lot of mistakes still that we need to take care of but let's just take a second to look at this. As a first draft this is not that bad. Because there are still quite a lot of big gaps between the keyframes, the interpolated frames don't turn out the way I would want it. So now we can start filling out the gaps. So first of all I like to work on smaller sections so I limit the timeline. This way I can focus on a particular part of the animation. And mainly I'm looking for the motion paths of the different point controllers, especially the wrists and the ankles because they draw the biggest arcs. Although it's better to first check the pelvis because it's higher in the hierarchy. In a lot of cases I'm adding keyframes just for the legs so the steps are 
correct, so they stay longer on the ground. So if I want the feet to stay longer on the ground, I will duplicate the previous leg keyframe by selecting it and with shift middle mouse button dragging it a couple of frames forward. Also the pelvis secondary controller are on the body track, so I sometimes have to add the keyframes on that track too to avoid stretching the leg. Also, it's not a good idea to keep the feet motionless on the ground, so you can add a little bit of rotation or tilting of the feet. And I'm just looking for any weird changes, especially with the spine and twisting of the shoulders. If you are using the auto-posing controllers, it has a tendency of popping the spine back and forth. I found that the twin machine is really useful to fix these kind of issues. So you can go to local mode, and even relative to pivot local mode. And if the shoulder is wrong, for example, you can get to the previous frame or the next frame, and this will handle the popping. Using a slower playback speed also reveals some smaller issues, which is useful on fast tricks like this. Also, if you want to change the timing of a trick, like I'm doing here with the touchdown rise, you can use the timeline stretching tool. So I can stretch out the entirety of this section and uh, later frames will be pushed backward. But make sure that the fixed interpolation button is disabled so you still keep the interpolations. I will go over all the keys I have set. The original keyframes are marked with red on the timeline. Everything I now added is blue. And you can also see where I set keyframes for only certain tracks. And this cleanup stage can really take as long as you want, but eventually you have to call it done. And to our final stage, we can work only with the auto physics. So at this point, I think the poses are good, the interpolations are also decent. I will go ahead to apply the auto physics for the whole animation. I first tried with every tool enabled, but at the beginning, the secondary motion really breaks the arm. Uh, so I kept the physics corrector, smooth trajectory, and smooth rotation tools enabled only. These are the tools that help smooth out the motion of the center of mass and the rotation of the body. The only thing I don't like is that the smooth trajectory tool likes to push the center of mass down a lot after jumps. This makes the knee move too much in front of the toes, and this causes the ankles to to bend in a sharp angle, so I like to tone it down a little bit. And then at the end, where the character is regaining control, we can use the other tools as well, like the secondary motion compens and the compensation motion. And these tools can add more details to the animation, like drag, for example, without extra work. To do this, I will enable to work only on a selected interval and select the desired interval, of course. You can tweak the settings. I only tweak the main sliders to control the strength of the effect and once you are satisfied with the suggestion you can apply these last sections too and we can call it done. From here I exported it to Blender and added the sword trail effect with the trail effects add-on. I love how it perfectly shows off the motion path. I will leave a link in the description. It's an affiliate link so if you check it out it also helps to support the channel but there is also a free version of this add-on. But more importantly uh, did you learn something new you're excited about to try out in your own workflow? And if you end up recreating this animation I would genuinely love to see it. Whether you post it on YouTube and tag me or drop it in the Cascader Discord Showcase and Critics channel. I'm really curious how your version would turn out.